Hello. Um, I have um, been working on these grasshopper files to make um, the layering of a mesh for you a little bit easier. And I have come up with a possibly simplest solution for you. And I want to show you how to do this now. So, okay, we go to our grasshopper file. Not grasshopper. So, we have Rhino. And I think what I want you to do first is you have your mesh, which is sort of cleaned up, and you import it. So, we go to import. And I scanned ahead this afternoon. I see if there's an SDL. I open this. I import it. Here we have it, and it's a really heavy mesh. Um, I want to switch the layers on. And I first want you to reduce the mesh. So we use the command reduce mesh. And I would reduce it to something like 90% or even 95. Let's say 90 is okay. So, and your computer then will have to crunch the mesh and uh, recalculate it. Um, and I think I have to do something here. I also want to slice it. Um, but there is a bit of a, a problem with this head I had in the design, so I'll probably quickly do that as well. So yeah, uh, recalculating meshes is very CPU intensive. So here we have it. Um, and it's also very useful for good housekeeping. You should always Put your object into the zero 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 position. Okay. So here we have it now in the zero 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 position. If we shade this, it's also um, a little bit askew here. And sometimes it's quite good to check this and to position it into the, so you can either drag on these curves, or what I tend to do is I I type in the grade angle, and this is also when you look down on it. I want the nose to be sort of facing forward, and I just yeah, I type in the fractions of grades, 10 grades, to kind of move it gradually into the right position. This looks about straight to me. It's also a little bit askew here. So here, let's do three. This is better. Looks about right. You have uh, sort of mesh editing tools, um, can not uh, repairs, uh, can unify the normals. But this is a sort of a, a mesh, um, it looks all right. What I want to do though is there's this offcut here. Let's see what I can do that. Um, and I want to basically, here we are. I, will, I just wonder whether I can actually cut this out a little bit. So what I'm trying to do is 
uh, the scan, it's obviously a hollow mesh and I want to just want to, I have these inner parts and I want to, I want to cut this out. So I want to split the mesh. So I want to take this, I want to split this mesh and the cutting object is the cylinder. Let's see what it does. Yeah. So I have this one now and the cylinder which I have, I destroy as well. So let's see whether we have a bit of a cleaner. Yes, that's exactly what I wanted. So sometimes you just have to do stuff like this. You can either slice it with a, with a straight line. Could also do that perhaps. So if you want to just kind of slice it in Rhino, you can also go to a cutting plane. And I want to cut this. And so now I want to basically have this cutting plane running along this angle. So and I'm probably just going to go into the right view where we can actually adjust this. Come on. Uh, this is da, 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 not grip snap. So sometimes you need to you need to adjust your snaps. Very important here in in Windows the snaps are on the bottom. You always need to kind of check whether they're on or off. They can basically stop you from working precisely. So let's have a look how this turns out. So if I make a cut here, that looks good. Okay, let's cut this off. So right click. Um, I want a mesh split. So this is the mesh to split. And the cutting object is this one. Okay. And we should have this one. I delete this. So that's a much neater surface now. Okay. Now, um, I promised you to kind of um, try to find a, a, an easier way using Grasshopper. As I said, I didn't plan to introduce glass, Grasshopper in this, in this class, but um, I just realized things are so much easier and can be so much more streamlined when you use Grasshopper. It is probably a huge learning curve, but for those who are interested in higher grade learning when it comes to design. Rhino in combination with Grasshopper is one of the most powerful tools out there. Um, so if you get to grips with Rhino and Grasshopper together, you know, you will have no problems finding jobs. Um, and um, so I'm going to show you how. So you need to click on this little Grasshopper and it's quite good to sign up for the food for Grasshopper. It's food and then the number four for Grasshopper. Sign up, get yourself an account. If you have any problems, you find pretty much all the solutions. I had a lot of problems here with um, offset of, um, I was struggling in class, so I had to kind of work this afternoon to figure that one out. And there's always, there's always something out there that works. Okay, now you click onto your Grasshopper and um, we're just going to go to Grasshopper file and we want to have a new document. So this is a new plain document. And I, you know, if you, I work on a very big screen, it is very useful to work on a big screen. Um, and I want to show you now first how to manipulate this mesh. Okay. Now we have our mesh. It's nicely, nicely cut up. Uh, so it's basically, uh, I first want to smooth this and you can do the smoothing. You could do all of this in Rhino, uh, but um, I want to show you a slightly um, nicer way. So when you work with Grasshopper, um, it's very, well, you have a lot of these tools that are sitting in Grasshopper also uh, in Rhino, you are also in Grasshopper. 
what it is, it parameterizes everything you do in, 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 in Rhino. And so when we want to import meshes, when you want to import anything or send a reference to Rhino, it goes like this. So you go onto this canvas, you double click onto it, um, you could go into geometry and you find a mesh tool here. But also, it's a bit like in Rhino, you have commands. You can also type in mesh. And then you have this. What it is here is a little battery. We call them batteries. And they, they are pretty much obscure. At the moment, it doesn't do anything. You have these little warning signals here. Um, so it doesn't have any data in there. How do you get data in there? You right click, and then you get a contextual menu. And here you set one mesh. Then you move to your grass, uh, your Rhino environment, and click onto your mesh. Now you see this little yellow button here is gone. If I click onto the battery, it seems to activate something here. And it is basically activating, has incorporated, parameterized the mesh into Grasshopper. What we can do now is we can hide the original and now we have this completely parameterized, which gives us far, far more options. Okay, um, I want to kind of I probably can do, I want to do something very simple. Uh, I want to have mesh normal. It's always where are those parts? Analysis mesh normals. Uh, unify mesh here, this one. So we have a mesh. So I just want want to get all basically the, kind of that the, the mesh functions better. You could do without this battery, but it kind of works better. And now um, I'm not quite sure where the weaver bird, so basically in Grasshopper, you have all these tabs here. And these tabs deal with certain issues, for example, with curves, with meshes, with surfaces. And I have all my um, contextual menu here. It's completely full uh, in my Windows machine because you can download them through Food for Rhino. I think Weaverbird is probably now installed. If you don't know, if you don't have this WB Weaverbird, you need to download it. And in, um, perhaps there, you can find tutorials how to incorporate Weaverbird into Rhino. In Food for Rhino, there are the tutorials to do that. I think Rhino 7 probably has integrated Weaverbird already because it's one of the most common tools. Um, so in Grasshopper, you have special folders, and uh, in these component folder, you have these plugins, yeah. Um, and in these plugins, I have, for example, Weaverbird should be somewhere in here. In other libraries, um, I think that's already integrated. There's Python in there, so. You will have to, you can just drag and drop. It's basically just a yellow file. You can sort of drag and drop it, but there are explanations out there in the web. I don't want to go, go back to that. Um, I don't want to, I want to concentrate on this. So you need this Weaverbird plugin integrated into Grasshopper. And there is something to smoothen your, and I used um, a Weaverbird mesh blur for this. Basically, when you look, my mesh is not quite it's a bit rough. And I just use the standard. So I if you highlight these, you click your mouse button in the middle of the wheel, you get also contextual menu. And this is where you can hide things. Yeah, so I'm hiding the mesh and the mesh component here. 
by press on the scrolling wheel and then you get this contextual menu so there are basically a few items you you will use so showing not showing so make it visible not visible group um baking but all these programs are also in other contextual menus yeah but this is the quickest way to get to it so use the scrolling wheel press down on the scrolling wheel okay now our mesh is a little bit nicer now you can sort of see the eyelids run a little bit smoother and the nice thing is now i can sort of goof around at the moment this is a little bit too big you know my head i modeled is really really big and because we can parameterize this now, um, it is parameterized, we can, we can are far, far more flexible in adjusting the data, adjusting what we want to go. So basically I want to make it smaller and I want to compress it. So I, I'm gonna go scale, I type in scale and you get various options in scale. So I want to do this, this is a very simple you can plug in any kind of data and at the moment you get these three options. So basically, if you want to con connect these batteries, you connect them with these wires. So you make connections from one code to the next. So what we actually doing is visual coding. Yeah. So we have to go to geometry here and we have other options in this battery. So at the, so this is the center of scaling. And it chose the center zero, zero, zero. So that's here. And then F stands for factor. Now we can adjust this factor. If you double click on the canvas and you just type in, let's say, let's say let's go simply with one. You type in one, you get automatic. If you type in a number, you get a number slider. Yeah. So if I plug this into the scale and I, I blend this out, I make this invisible. So this stands what we will see here. Yeah. At the moment we scale it at factor one, so it doesn't scale down. But now if we do this, hold on, I need to double scale. Uh, this is just at the zeros or ones. We want to have a little bit more nuance in here so and here now we can scale this down if you so again you double click on here and then you get another contextual menu and here you can actually set different parameters yeah at the moment i can so the maximum is two so i can actually scale it upwards as well yeah so I could double it in size or I go smaller. If I double click here, I can also type the number directly. And then I click the button. So this is half the size of this one. Yeah. And this is good, good, good enough for me. Um, if I, if I don't take a number slider, usually these factors have a built in number, but it's good to, you know, have the option. Okay, um, but I also want to compress it. I want to make it kind of flat and I go scale again, but in a different wire. So now I go scale numeric. And here I take this geometry here and plug the geometry in here. Um, we have at the moment the plane X, Y, and here you've got the X, Y and Z coordinates. Now, what does that mean? This refers to your X, Y, and Z coordinates in your Rhino, in your Rhino man. So it's X, Y, and Z upwards. Yeah? So I want to make it kind of like a flat head. So I want to flatten it out in the Y direction. So I again go, uh, I want to flatten it. So I want to half it. So I go 0 0.5 and plug it into my Y direction. So this is our object here, the scaled object. This is the original object. We blend this out. Uh, 
I blend this out as well. And here we have it. This is what I actually want to make with a laser cutter in in um, in the next tutorial. So I want to stop this here now. So this is a very simple, and now I'm just going to go and group this. Just press this here. If I right click onto this thing, I can give this mesh, mesh for laser cut. Yeah, we have this here. We have a here, a geometry. And now if I want to theoretically, if you want, if you, if you, for example, want to, Want to 3D print this, for example, yeah? You can right click onto HIC and you go bake. So at the moment, if I go, let's cancel this just. So if I go onto my Rhino environment, I can look at it, but I can't click on it because it's parameterized. It doesn't kind of, it just exists as data. If you want to bring it back into the Rhino environment, you go to your final battery here. You could also, for example, add, a, add for good measure. You know, this is basically, we, this is a mesh, yeah? So this geometry is actually a mesh. If you go onto this here, it's a geometry that says one locally defined value, it's a mesh, yeah? And what do we actually get here? Uh, that's probably referring to this one here. Um, oh yeah, this is this is the, the scaling. Uh, so, but this is a mesh. We could so we could bake this, but yeah, perhaps I'm just gonna bake it from here. Yeah, but this is I could do it exactly like this here. Right click, bake, or here right click, bake. It's exactly the same data. So let's bake this. I click on it and I bake it, let's say in layer two, press okay. And now we can blend this all out. Let's quickly put this away. And here we have a mesh that is actually quite nice. And uh, so we could use this in a I don't know with a laser cutter or I know with a with a with a with a with a three D printer for example, yeah. And in a rendered mode, so I have this sort of uh, smoothed and distorted mesh by a grasshopper. Yeah. Okay. I think I stopped this recording now, save it as, and uh, I'm going to put it on YouTube, uh, on my YouTube channel, uh, manip uh, bring it in, I probably sort of name it as converting a mesh in grasshopper and smoothing it. Something like that. So you should start with this, kind of do something with your mesh first, like this one here. Okay. And then in the next tutorial, I show you how to slice it up.